Hi everyone, welcome to Kate Bonnie Country. You can call me Kate. Normally I would invite you in to have a seat, but hopefully this will be a short one. So you know I have a dog grooming business, right? Well, my work hours are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I turn off the work phone between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. All calls go straight to voicemail. So I had a gentleman with a 50 pound dog that needed a bath, dry, brush, trim, nail service. He also tells me his dog has some behavioral issues, gets very anxious, and he needs to be sedated. We schedule an appointment for 10 a.m. on a Thursday. That would give him enough time to stop by the vet's office at 8 a.m. to be sedated, give it time to work into his system, and then come to his grooming at 10. I have a 48-hour cancellation policy. If you give me 48 hours notice, I can usually find someone to fill that slot. But if you don't give me 48 hours notice, if you give me less than 48 hours notice, I'm going to charge you for the full groom if I cannot find someone to fill that slot. This is my policy. All of my clients are given this policy I email this policy to all of my clients at the time they book the appointment. I also confirm the appointment the Saturday before the scheduled groom. I send out the reminders. On Sunday, I get a message that his work schedule changed and he will not be able to bring his dog at the appointed time. Okay, not a problem. You've given me sufficient notice. I should be able to find someone to fill that space. I wasn't able to find somebody to fill that space, so I groomed my Tamir instead. Still, he gave me proper notice. I did not charge him for the $60 that I lost that day. And we were able to reschedule. At first, he wanted to do it exactly a week later. I explained to him that that day is completely booked. He's like, well, I could be there by 5.30. I close at 6. If you want me to groom after hours, I will be happy to but I am going to charge you overtime. I am going to charge you one and a half times the normal rate. I explained to him in order to do that, I will have to charge $90 since I am starting the appointment a half hour before close and it will end an hour after I close. I'm charging time and a half overtime, just like anyone else. He says it's too much. I say, okay, my next available appointment is on a Wednesday, almost two weeks later, at 2 p.m. He says, okay, I'll take it. I send out my reminders on the Saturday before I don't hear from him. I go about my business. I go about my business on Monday. I go about my business on Tuesday. Wednesday rolls around. I have a little part-time job and I need to do some stuff there before I start my day. So I get up at 6.30. I check my email. There's no message. I get myself together. I go do the other job. I finish it around 9 a.m., that's when I turn on my work phone and I check my messages. There's a voicemail, 7.30 a.m. Uh, I'm not going to be able to bring him today. Um, he doesn't want to walk on the leash. Six and a half hours before your appointment, 
You're calling me to tell me that your dog doesn't want to walk on a leash. So you're not going to be able to bring him? What? Okay, so. I call him back and I ask him what the problem is. He says the dog doesn't want to walk on a leash. He's being stubborn today. So I politely remind him of my 48-hour cancellation policy and explain to him that I will have to invoice him for the full $60 groom, that he must pay that invoice in full before I will reschedule him for a third time, and he must prepay for all of his grooming in the future. The man went ballistic. He called me a greedy B-word, a stupid C-word. He said he thought I was so nice. But no, I'm not. I'm just like every greedy, explicative, explicative, explicative groomer out there. He said, this is no way to start a business, and he will make sure to tell all of his friends that I am a horrible, explicative, explicative person, and that they should not use me. This man cost me $120. That is my water bill and garbage pickup for two months. That is two-thirds of my monthly electricity bill. That is one that is one week of groceries for my family if I am very careful about how I spend my money. That man took food out of my mouth because he could not respect my time. What does he think? What is wrong with people? Do you think I'm being unreasonable? Is it unreasonable to expect people to respect my time? I try to respect their time. If I make an appointment with someone, I'm going to show up. If I'm getting my hair cut, I'm showing up on time. If I can't show up, I'm going to give them plenty of notice to find someone else. Yes, emergencies happen. I can waive that fee if there is an emergency. If your dog is sick, I will absolutely waive that fee. If your dog is vomiting or has diarrhea, absolutely cancel on me. Call me up and tell me I will waive that fee because I don't want a sick dog coming into my shop bringing those germs with it where I have to disinfect every square inch before grooming another client. That's reasonable. That's an emergency. If a family member passes away or somebody needs to go to the hospital, I will be a compassionate person and waive that fee. I understand that emergencies happen. But your dog not wanting to walk on a leash is not an emergency. Pick him up, throw him in the car, and bring him. What is a reasonable cancellation time limit? What is a reasonable cancellation fee? Let me know. Let me know in the comments, because I can't, I can't survive if this is going to happen. I can't survive when people don't show up for their appointments and take food out of my mouth. Y'all, I need your help. Let me know in the comments. What can I do differently? What do you consider reasonable? Thanks, guys, for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for just letting me vent. I'll see you next time.